What if I told you after a good day in the market, the market would have its worst day since October 7th, 2022, and my profiteers, it happened. But we're gonna let you guys know why that's actually a good thing if we have this certain investment and why also it might mean it's a bottom of one particular sector and how we can profit. But before we get started, as always, like, subscribe, share to our channel as we continue to grow. I'm a certified financial planner, been practicing for 17 years, a certified financial planner for 11 years, but on these YouTube streets, I'm just giving you guys some good information. But before we get started, check out that Patreon, y'all, as we continue to grow. Follow me on Patreon, subscribe to our newsletter. We give information on a weekly basis from an investment standpoint and financial planning. Your boy is a certified financial planner, was not certified, the market being down. The NASDAQ by 3.6%. The Dow Jones, not down as much. The S&P down by 2.4%. But my Russell, the Russell 2000, 2000, which I think over the course of the rest of the year is going to outpace everything else, gave us another sign why it is rocking and rolling even on a bad day. So without further ado, let go. Let's get to this sharp sell-off with our market panel. Joining us now is Wealth Enhancement Group Senior Vice President Nicole Webb and CNBC Senior Markets Commentator Mike Santoli. It's great to have both of you here. Nicole, I'm going to start with you because we had, it looks like a 3.6% downdraft in the NASDAQ. For the S&P 500, the fact that we closed down, it looks like about 2.3%. This is the first time we've... Yes, my profiteers, 3.6%. Worst day of the NASDAQ since October 7th of 2022. What does that mean though? We'll see. It's down, it looks like about 2.3%. This is the first time we've actually seen a loss, a daily loss of 2% in the S&P 500, 356 trading days. It's the worst since December of 2022. For the S&P 500, for the NASDAQ since October. But think about that. First day in almost two years that the S&P 500 went down by more than 2%. How reflective of that is of the day and the trading, or, or is it more reflective of the fact that we've had a market that up until now has been very buoyant? I'm going to take the latter. It is more reflective of that. And I think above all else, what's happening in mega tech, and that's really where most of this sell-off is coming from today, is that the expectations just got so stretched. And so as we go in and we hear more of the likes of what we heard from Meta last quarter, which is spending is going to be expensive. And we don't know exactly when we're going to get a big return on that spend. And as a commercial plays, now my profiteers, I have to say, the AI bubble is not busted, but what's happened is that the chickens come to roost and we ain't laying no eggs because most of Wall Street, most of Wall Street thought that it would be a larger gain from a monetary and earnings standpoint. It just has not happened. We think we're making money. We think companies are making money. They're spending money, but they're not making money. So when Google comes out with, ah, uh, okay numbers, drives down the market. When Tesla comes out with numbers that we knew was bad, but not as bad as we thought, drives down the market. This, my friends, sounds like a rotation. And that rotation is going from large cap, magnificent seven investments to small cap investments because Jerome Powell and the Fed is going to come cut them rates. And so when Google gives us what it gave us, which was just even the slightest miss and really just none of those upside surprises that we got accustomed to, it starts to look expensive in the short term. And so you're starting to see that play out. Tesla, very different story. But going into more mega tech earnings, I think the question is just going to be how stretched are those expectations? How big is the response to that? But then you have the likes and the revisions on earnings forecasts and financials. And so financials we talk about the russell 2000 we're gonna get to that to a second you see some of that broadening our thesis going into this this earnings season was that we are in a soft patch with little expectation of a catalyst so there's likely a consolidation through the first and maybe even second rate cut where then we really get the validation that we're past peak inflation we're past peak rates and we're you see she just put that in there the first and second rate cut it's coming y'all 
Some people think it actually might come at the end of the month on July 31st. Me, I think it's going to be in September, definitely October, November as well, right before the elections. Well, actually, it's after the elections, but who knows what a recount. Y'all know how we get down. Past peak tightening. And that's not good just for the sentiment, but also from the technicals. And so, mm -hmm. while it looks nice to see this value trade play out, while the first 10 percent of names coming in look pretty good. We also think that that next calidus is more on the validation side and that there's this consolidation that continues. Consolidation, my profiteers, that's a big word for downturn. And the MAG-7 might be extended. So Tesla, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, yes, NVIDIA, Amazon, Apple, Meta, the fave, Five, no, the Magnificent Seven now, they might be overextended. And they are part why the market's been so good this year. A lot of stocks have not grown that much, but they've outpaced the market. So as they're going down, the market's going to go down as well, even though some stocks won't go down as much. But my profiteers, we're going to talk about something that we think is a rotation to the upside. Lego. Now, the Wall Street Journal, right? We're going to look here at what it did. What it, whoa, what it did, right? And as we can see, total stock market down 2.34%, SP down 2.31%, top 100 down 2.67%. Again, those mega caps. And we had the NASDAQ down 36 But my mid caps and my small caps down but not down nearly as much as everybody else. That is what you call rotation. That means people are selling things, trimming the fat per se, and we all got fat with that MAG7 stocks, and they're going into small caps. And with the Fed lowering rates, who's going to make the most money? In my opinion, small caps. And the charts, they don't lie. My profiteers, here is the Russell 2000. And as I explained the other day, we're jumping, we're jumping, but look at what we have here. Higher highs, higher lows. Man, oh man. Low, high, higher, low. Higher high, higher low. But then look at that. Boom, look at that gap up. Bounce one time, reject. Bounce again, reject. My profiteers, once we get at 2300 on the small cap, probably going to go to 3000 Big, big number. I know Tom Lee said 40%. As we illustrated, that's 3100 So that is a huge, huge increase. But might be a chance in correction territory, not because of them, but because of the rest of the market. So we might come back down to our 200-day. If we go back down to our 200-day, that is a 5 almost 6% drop. But my profiteers, if it does it, I think it's going to bounce up. I don't even know it's going to get there. Even if the market does continue to go down, I think small caps will be rewarded because we'll have people selling those large caps, getting the small caps. So over the next few months, as we hear election rhetoric, as we hear the markets going down, as we hear this recession time, Jay Powell's going to fly to the rescue, lower rates. When he lowers rates, what does that mean? My baby, TMF, that long-term bond fund I've been telling you guys about, that's going to go up. But the Russell 2000, all the small caps, that's going to go up as well. So how do we take advantage of the market going down like it is? We do a sector rotation. We get out, not completely, but we do get out of some of those large cap investments, pocket our gains, take our profits, them painful profits, and right now our profits are painful, right? Because we're making money and now we're losing what we made, but we get smart. So my recommendation on these YouTube streets, not for you, but from an informational standpoint, go into some of those small caps, Russell 2000, IWM. If you want to be risky, triple leverage, U-R-T-Y, not a recommendation, but check it out. Those might get you where you want to go as the market potentially continues to go down. Well, there you have it, my profiteers. A good thesis for today. Again, bad, bad day. NASDAQ down by 3.6%, the worst day since October 7th of 2022. But change gonna come because the market might keep on going down. But I believe 
small caps with the Russell is going to profit off of that. Now, we might have some bumpy rolls ahead, but over the next six months going to the end of the year, I think that's going to be the sector that's going to outperform everything else compared to the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. But comment below, what do we think? Am I crazy? The market's going to go back up? Recession time? Is everything going to go down? I don't know. I know one thing. We're here to help you doing the good times and the bad. But love is love. Let's make some paper profits together, y'all. Peace. Mistakes, make a payment on your bills and you still late. Yeah, pay for profits to help you seek change. Uh, and you just wanna get paid. Yeah, tired of making no money mistakes. Make a payment on your bills and you still late. Uh, pay for profits to help you seek change. Yeah, cut the show and just listen. You wanna feel empowered by making money decisions. Residual by the hours can get you a better living. Uh, been check the check, you know, and it could be different. You know.